We led the programme today on the failings of Rotherham Council to protect children from sexual exploitation, but there was another piece of news today about vulnerable people being let down. The National Audit Office says that a pledge to move people with learning difficulties out of hospitals into care in their local communities has not been met. The pledge was made two years ago after the scandal at Winterbourne View Care Home, which you'll remember was exposed by our colleagues at Panorama uh, for cruel abuse of patients. Well, care in the community is widely seen as a good thing. It's been talked about for decades. So what is the problem? Katie Razzle reports. Hilariously funny, had wonderful interests, you know, completely absorbed himself in transport and buses and Eddie Stobar. He was big on history. He loved police officers, he loved the law, he loved comedy. Connor Sparrowhawk's family have buried him in a woodland grave in the corner of an Oxfordshire cemetery. He'd lived happily with them and his siblings at home for 18 years, a boy with autism, epilepsy and learning disabilities. Much loved, much missed. He just loved being with his family, actually. He just was a real home, home bunny. It must make it even more heartbreaking that he had such a happy time here for so long. Yeah, no, it does. And it sort of... The bite, what, on the day of his funeral, he came, they brought him, he started here because all he wanted to do when he was in the unit was come home. Connor drowned in the bath at an NHS assessment and treatment unit after having an epileptic fit. His family had agreed he should move to the ATU temporarily when he'd started to become agitated and aggressive. 107 days later, he was dead. From the moment you have children, you worry about all the things that could happen to them. One thing I'd never worried about was any one of my children um, dying in an NHS medical provision. Um, and, you know, he was in there for 107 days, but it feels a bit like, you know, going to the GP and not coming home, you know, that something so outlandish um, never crossed our mind. Do you feel he was let down? Oh, God. Yeah. Indescribably. I mean, he was a fit and healthy young man in a hospital. I mean, the, the one thing we thought, I think, when we took him in there was that he was going to be safe. That was the, that was the, the point, in a way, of, of him going in there. But safety isn't always guaranteed in these hospitals, as the Panorama programme about the abuse of people with learning disabilities in Winterbourne View exposed so brutally. That ATU near Bristol is shut, but the deadline of last June to get patients out of places like this is long gone, and today the National Audit Office said ministers had underestimated the difficulties. Of the 2,600 inpatients with learning disabilities in mental health hospitals in September 2014, 83% were sectioned under the Mental Health Act. The NHS spent £557 million keeping them there in 2012-13, to 13, which amounts to just over £214,000 per patient. What happened here was so shocking it became a call to arms. Promises were made to move people with learning disabilities out of units like Winterbourne View, but it just hasn't happened. Two years, two months and 17 days after the Panorama programme was broadcast, a young woman died in a unit in East Yorkshire. The coroner ruled this was not a case of neglect. Stephanie Bincliffe had lived in a padded room in almost total isolation for nearly seven years, with no access to fresh air or exercise. When she died, she weighed 26 stone. No one would believe that we are capable of that as a society. If you were to ask, it would be another country, it would not be here. Um, for her to be in isolation for that period of time, at the prime of her life, it really mattered. And you know, there is not enough outcry about that, there's not enough outrage, and her life is precious. The other option to hospitals, keeping people in their communities, isn't easy. But Kevin Preen, a volunteer at a charity for people with learning disabilities, invited me to his home to explain why it matters. I feed the cat, get myself a bit of grub, so I got my own control and uh, do what I want to do. What did you think when you saw what happened at Winterbourne View? We thought that was disgusting and there was no way to treat the same people. So if they had a learning, how would they like it if they had a learning disability and we'd done that to them, would they like it? Connor's family are fighting for justice. A damning report found his death was preventable. The health secretary has personally apologised. 
and I think these ATUs, that's what happens. I think they're just they're almost like warehouses really to house people who are seen as problematic. And I think it's very they're on the edges of society, they're on the edges of town, and it's way too easy to forget about them. And and then I just dread to think what sort of lives people lead inside them. And they still are. And they still are. That report from Katie Razzle.